Elder abuse affects one in 10 adults who are 60 years old or older. Think about that for a minute. Yet less than half, one in 24 cases, are actually reported to authorities. As we recognize National World Elder Abuse Awareness Day, we want to help you protect your parents or your grandparents. Andrea Spencer is with Elder Source and is joining us via Zoom this morning. Good morning. Thanks for being with us. Good morning. Thank you. So let's start first, if we could, with physical and emotional abuse. How prevalent would you say is this and what are the warning signs? Emotional abuse is actually one of the most common forms of elder abuse. And that is something as simple as calling somebody names, shielding them from family and friends so that they can't um, have any contact and basically isolating them from people who love them and who can support them. The physical abuse is obviously something that can be seen through the bruises and the injuries. Um, and that is very, again, prevalent in our um, society right now. And a lot of the abuse right now, unfortunately, is happening in the home. You know, seniors have been isolated during the pandemic and it has been a, an elevation of cause of concern for those individuals who have been separated from family and friends and who may be cared for by a family and friend or a caregiver. Um, so they're, they're in a very vulnerable situation. So this particular day, World Elder Abuse Awareness Day, is very important for people to tap into those resources to understand what are the signs, um, where can I get information, and how might I be able to report some sort of sus suspected abuse. So we, we understand, obviously, that physical abuse, abuse should be something that we could you know see, though I could see how a caregiver who might be abusing someone either physically or emotionally could make an excuse for bruising because older people take medication that can cause them br to bruise easily or to bleed easily. Are there certain signs that we should look for, though, in older people that, that might uh, trigger more of a conversation that would lead to, you know, a revelation that this is going on? Yes, most definitely. Those are the obvious signs. But depression, not eating, they're quiet, um, the mood swings, unexplained bruises and injuries, they can't, they say, oh, I've fallen. But um, when they're scared or withdrawn, a lot of times people don't report that abuse because they're afraid and they're afraid or embarrassed um, to think that maybe their loved one is the person who um, is hurting them and they don't want to um, uh, get that person in trouble. So they tend to withdraw, be quiet, and make excuses. So we want to be cognizant of those situations that um, that give them the opportunity to um, to hide what might truly be at the root of the cause of their depression and mood swings and loss of eating. Yeah, which is why having constant conversations with them is so important. I want to just get very quickly also to something else because we hear about this all the time at the station. And that's the fact that another form of abuse, which is essentially taking advantage of people who are older, they tend to maybe be extremely vulnerable to scams. There are a number yeah. of financial scams for time purposes. I'd like to try to highlight one or two. Uh, first of all, would you explain how the grandparent scam works? Sure. Um, and this happens to people that I know, and it's very, very common. They get a call from a grandchild. The voice is kind of muffled over the phone, and they're they, like, oh, I got in an accident and I'm hurt, but I'm in jail now and I need money to get out of um, to bail money to get out of jail. Can you please um, help send me these gift cards to pay for my bail? So it's very... Um, um, scary in the sense that they're being called by somebody who supposedly is a loved one and familiar with them. So that is the grandparent scam and the grandparents go to um, a Walgreens or a CVS. And thankfully, a lot of the pharmacies nowadays are um, have that heightened alert of understanding that if somebody's coming to the counter, particularly an older adult, and they're asking for two or $3,000 worth of um, gift cards, that that's a red flag. So they're stopping them at the counter, which is very good. But again, they're afraid. The fear of um, not getting their grandchild out of jail sometimes overtakes the common sense of, of reporting. Like, you know what, I think this sounds kind of funny. So one of the things that they can do is, is call the parent or even call the, the grandchild and say, um, are you where you're supposed to be? So that is one way you can quickly prevent um, that call from turning into a disaster. And, and, and I want to also point out, these people are extremely convincing. I personally know two people who have phoned for that and turned over 
tens of thousands of dollars. And, and you know, they're, it's a grandchild and they haven't talked to him in a while and they're just so worried, you know, about that child's safety that they do things that they normally would not necessarily do. So again, yeah. having that conversation, if you have older parents, talking to them and reminding them about this uh, is so, so critical. Andrea, thank you so much for your time this morning. I really Thanks. appreciate it. And, and also I wanna remind our viewers as well that Elder Source is actually sponsoring a free virtual workshop this morning to help you avoid getting scammed. So it starts at 10 o'clock this morning. It runs until 1130. We weren't able to cover all of the different kinds of financial scams. I'm sure that they're going to discuss those on this virtual call. So to register for the event, you can go to myeldersource.org. And if you can't make it, Elder Source is recording the workshop and will post it on its website in the next few days.